Hi, my name is Fred Kusumoto, and it's my pleasure to introduce you to Celine Gallagher and have this discussion about Heart Rhythm 2021. Celine, would you introduce yourself? Absolutely. Thank you, Dr. Kusumoto. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Celine Gallagher. I'm a postdoctoral fellow and clinical nurse at the Center for Heart Rhythm Disorders uh, at the University of Adelaide and Royal Adelaide Hospital in Adelaide, South Australia. Super. And how did you experience uh, heart uh, rhythm this year? Because I know Australia under a complete lockdown. So, Absolutely. Unfortunately, international travel is not permitted here in Australia at this point in time. Uh, so unfortunately, for the uh, second year in a row, it was uh, virtual attendance uh, for all Australians for the Heart Rhythm Society. Uh, so uh, the way we experienced HRS was uh, through the uh, virtual platform. And how did that go for you? What, how did the sessions go? And uh, was there a specific session that really, you know, picked your interest that uh, you thought was really innovative and novel? Look, there were a, a fabulous range of sessions that uh, I attended through the virtual platform. Uh, one of the real standout sessions for me uh, was about creating an AF Centre of Excellence. Uh, so this was um, a series of rapid fire talks, um, so seven minute talks, uh, really given by a number of trailblazers in this field uh, about practical tips and ways that we can uh, create an AF Centre of Excellence. Uh, so the, the session was uh, kicked off by Dr. Deneke in Germany, uh, and he talked to us about the importance of the, the four pillars of AF care. So uh, covering appropriate oral anticoagulation, rate control, rhythm control, and of course, lifestyle and cardiovascular risk factor management. Uh, so he highlighted the importance of identifying the pillars that you want to address uh, in terms of creating an AF center of excellence, and then spoke to some of the uh, ways that they're looking to address this in Germany. So, um, for example, they have um, an accreditation for AF ablation centers, and they have a program, uh, Action Atrial Fibrillation, which looks at standardizing care from diagnosis to treatment. So this was a, a really exciting talk. Um, Amber Saylor from uh, Cone Health then followed up. Um, she gave us an overview of 10 steps uh, associated with creating an AF Centre of Excellence and really highlighted the importance of this being a team approach. So we can't manage uh, AF by one healthcare professional alone. I think we've all come to appreciate that in recent years. And um, the importance of buy-in uh, from uh, lots of different uh, departments and team members, uh, creating goals, evaluating progress, uh, and then looking at new ways uh, that we can continue to enhance uh, care and, and share our success with other centres along the way. And um, we had uh, Dr. Deering talked to us about the use of the electronic health record um, and how important that is. Uh, Dr. Cantanzaro then uh, followed up uh, talking about um, improvement, scalability, the importance of evaluation um, in creating these um, centres of excellence. Uh, and then Dr. Tung uh, talked to us about the importance of uh, the sleep physician in the role of managing atrial fibrillation. So really comprehensive, diverse range of talks, uh, very practical tips about how uh, we can uh, create AF centres of excellence. And we certainly need to be uh, collaborating more and sharing our successes and challenges in setting up these centres. No, that's absolutely true. And actually, that's a, a huge endeavor and initiative for Heart Rhythm Society working on uh, developing some criteria for uh, centers of excellence. How does one structure, where are the pain points, uh, you know, things like that. So there is actual active work uh, by John Piccini and uh, the Heart Rhythm Quality Group really trying to identify how best can we manage these patients with atrial fibrillation. You know, it was really your group that really showed us how important it was to take a very holistic approach to the patient with atrial fibrillation and develop systems of care that uh, can help our patients. What were the pain points? Can give us a little bit of your experience in Adelaide. Tell us a little bit about, you know, sort of what worked, what were the pain points, what doesn't work? Go ahead. I know everyone would love to hear. 
Absolutely. Um, we've certainly learned a lot along the way. Uh, one of the uh, main areas of interest for our group has been uh, the role of lifestyle and cardiovascular risk factor management. Uh, and I think a number of studies that we have undertaken have really become integrated into standard AF care uh, because we've highlighted the importance of uh, this in, in managing atrial fibrillation. But yes, we've learned a lot along the way. So um, we started out uh, delivering these programs in a, a physician only led clinic. And over time, um, we've come to appreciate that, in fact, nurses and allied health uh, are also effective at delivering these uh, programs. Um, so that was an important lesson for us and perhaps uh, enhances the um, translatability and applicability of these models uh, so that these can be uh, easily implemented around the world. Um, we've also uh, looked at uh, integrated care models uh, and the importance of the uh, multidisciplinary team. And I think really one of the um, biggest challenges in um, setting up these clinics is uh, really getting buy-in from our administrators um, and from uh, the uh, management teams that surround us. Uh, and, you know, to, in order to be able to do that, we need to continue to prove the efficacy of these models. So, you, you know, we've had a number of studies now that have shown uh, how efficacious they are. Um, you know, certainly uh, Dr. Allred in, in another one of his sessions in Cone Health, uh, they've demonstrated the cost effectiveness of these uh, AF centers of excellence and models of care that really use this integrated care approach but we need to continue building the evidence so we can get buy-in and convince our administrators and managers that this really is the most effective way to deliver AF care. And um, so I think these are the challenges that, that lie ahead for us. And um, you know, the widespread rollout of such models is really important. Uh, and I think as uh, centers of excellence, we need to be sharing what we've learned with um, centers that are trying to get these models up and running. Yeah, you know, your experience is so helpful, right? Because, you know, taking care of patients really does take a village. Each of us with our own areas of expertise, whether it be, you know, thinking about exercise or weight management, uh, uh, nurses, uh, allied uh, professionals, advanced practice professionals, the whole gamut, right? Including administrators to understand that thinking about systems of care overall, right? I mean, this is how we're going to best manage patients. I couldn't agree with you more. And I'm so excited that this is how our sort of world is going because I do think that this will really benefit the patient. Absolutely, I couldn't agree more. And, uh, you know, I also think that this has broader application beyond atrial fibrillation. You know, I do see this as a model um, that we could apply to many other chronic cardiovascular conditions or indeed chronic conditions in general. So I think this has really widespread applicability and translatability. Yeah, I think that that's a great point. Well, we need to end uh, here, Celine. I just want to also just give you my personal thanks for being one of our pace setters. For those of you in the audience, as it were, who don't know, our pace setters group is a group like Celine who, you know, work hard on social media to really get this message out because, you know, it's one thing to talk to the people who are within our space, et cetera, but it's also important to get our message out, as you point out, Celine, to all members of the medical field and the medical profession and those who wouldn't even be thought of as traditionally in the medical field, and of course, our patients. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was certainly a privilege and an honor to be a pace setter this year. Thank you for the opportunity.